are now tuning into the Fathers Matter 2 podcast, where we discuss family, careers, community, health, and all the other stuff you just might not talk about in the barbershop. Sponsored by Port Royal Patties and Father Figure Children and Family Services. With your host, David Mines. Fathers Matter 2. Okay, so we say good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Fathers Matter 2 podcast. Um, And today is a a very special but different and strange show in for many different ways because um, firstly, we've got our first female guest in the studio, or in my kitchen, I should say, with us. Um, Secondly, because we have two guests, and again, it's the first time we've had two guests. Um, But more importantly, because um, it's a really difficult subject that we're going to discuss today. Um, the two guests today with me are actually personal friends of mine, uh, which make it, a, again, a little bit different. Um, so let's welcome them. We've got Paul Barnes and Lillian Serapuma. Have I got that right? You got it. Of course I got it right. Um, welcome to uh, my kitchen. Thank you for having us. Pleasure. And um, we're talking to you both today because um, you are the parents of um, Kamari. Um, and we sadly, um, you sadly, we sadly lost Kamari uh, back in 2017, yeah. on the 23rd of January, um, which I'm sure is a day that none of you and none of us will, will, will forget. Um, and I wanted to have you guys here today um, because obviously currently we're seeing so much um, knife crime and murders of young men just like you lost your son and um i felt that it was a a really important subject for us to talk about and um you know to talk about some of the things that we don't see in the news um so i guess we'll get straight into it and um first question i'm going to ask you guys and I, the thing is, I, I know the answer to this question because I knew Kamari. And I can't help but think about Kamari with a smile on my face. But tell our listeners, um, for those listening and those watching, what type of boy um, was Kamari? Um, very lively, mm-hmm. very confident. And also, he was, he was very wise for his young age. Yeah. yeah, I'd agree. I think uh, I feel a reggae fanatic, mm. Bob Marley fan. Mm. I think um, I remember um, Paul's brother, a mutual <laughs> friend, making a, a. I can't remember where this came from. You, I think you know what I'm going to say because I can see a smile <laughs> coming on your face about the question about who was whose dad. <laughs> <laughs> Was, was did he that? have? Did he have me, or did I have him? There you go. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I I remember Kamari fondly. Just it's sad that it takes sometimes incidents for you to really appreciate. Um, it or not even incidents, death. Yeah. To appreciate someone's character and spirit. Yeah. And he really was an old man in a young body like he was way beyond his years in my in, you know in my opinion um paul when was the last time you saw kamari before he passed away um the last time i see kamari was the night before the day before he passed away actually the sunday night and uh, his last words was to me was bye dad mm. you know that's the first time i've ever said that to anyone but his last words to me was bye dad and then, bye son so that that was one f- i'm glad like our parting words was was that mm. you know couldn't part no better words than yeah. and by dad didn't know it would be forever but you know mm. um, but the night before but um, we was at my stepdad's nine night actually um, and the funny thing is <laughs> that night the, the night that night they hear the clash on in the van on the way home from them the nine night with the next guy 
in the back of the van. We was like, prop us out. We took it back to old schools. He, 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 had a, he had an experience of old school, how we used to run things back in the old school with sound system, had to take out the boxes, bring it into a man's house. He was, you know, he was buzzing over that. He was like, what? And, and for some of our listeners who, who don't know what a clash is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A clash is when um, two people musically... Um, challenge each other mm-hmm. and, and and generally play records or, or tracks one for one, yeah. Um, and, and seeing which one gets the best reaction, yeah. And... Which he won that clash actually, <laughs> it, it tore them apart. Reason being because they weren't expecting him to play certain revival tunes at right. his young age, you know. So the guy who was playing loves revival tunes. So when he was in back and he was playing like a couple of Dennis Brown and Bob Marley's because originally the, the guy was clashing me. Okay. Yeah, I was I was running at my mouth to him. So he goes, what? So I, on my time, I only had about maybe four Dennis Brown tunes on my phone and a couple of other um, revival tunes in there. So when he was, after this, after the second tune I played, Kamari was like, that, nah, you're not killing my dad like that. And he stepped in and he... he um, he annihilated and it. saved his dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he came to my rescue. Saved his dad. Um, Lillian, <laughs> what about yourself? Um, your last time you saw Kamari? Sitting down eating. Um, that was the night before on a Sunday. He literally ate more food than I've seen him eat all in one go. Right. And then... Um, Usually what would happen is he would leave school, I mean, leave for school in the morning before me. Mm-hmm. So that morning I happened to leave before him. So for me, the last thing I remember, I, I called my daughter just to make sure we got up right. to get to yeah, school. Yeah. And yeah, so technically the last time I saw him was on the Sunday night. I didn't disturb him in, in the, the morning. morning. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. isn't unusual when you've got youngsters that age yeah. going off to school, etc. Um, so, I mean, tell, tell, for those who haven't, um, and maybe hearing about this incident for the first time, could you tell us, um, how Kamari, um, ended up losing his life and what, what, the the ins and outs of the incident and what took place? Okay. It's still quite surreal to me because till now there's never really been a reason for why my son lost his life. Um, To be honest, even in terms of, there was no, there wasn't that much previous, there wasn't contact, he wasn't, the the boy that took his life wasn't even known to us. So it wasn't someone significant Mm -hmm. that we knew about or Kamari ever spoke about. I just know that they would have attended the same youth centre, but I don't even think they were even very closely associated. I do know that from information that I've later found out, out of Kamari's group of friends, he would likely say hello to Kamari more than he would the rest of them. So it's still a bit... It's real. Yeah. See, that's news to me. Mm. I didn't know that. Yeah. And and so we know that the incident took place after school. Kamari Mm -hmm. was... And correct me if I'm wrong, Kamari was doing exactly what he should have been doing. Yeah. Which is what, for me, I think, made he was this at the right place at the, at right, the right, right time. time. And this is what I think, and I've always said this to you, Paul, as my friend, that what one of the things that made this, I feel, made this, your son's murder, touch a lot of people, is that he was doing exactly what he should have been doing. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think that any murder should be recognised than any more than any other of a young yeah. child, yeah, you know. They're all, it's all a loss. But our natural instincts allow us and make us, some of us, to think of them differently. Yeah. When we hear, for example, that a 15-year-old might have been murdered at midnight yeah. at, a, at a club mm. or coming out of a club or on a high street and, and the first thing is like... Well, what are you doing there? What's, mm. Right. But anyone with a child mm. resonates with... A child at three thirty, yeah, heading to the bus stop to go home, yeah, and so yeah, you know, what what do we know about? Do you know what? Yeah, at the end of the day, um, to me, social media played a lot, a big part in all of this, mm-hmm. yeah, because this young lad, yeah, he came from South London, right, you know what I mean? So he travelled from one area to another area. Now, 
yeah, this the, he had an altercation yeah, with another boy. They don't live in the same area. They don't live around the corner from each other. So it's obvious they've had this altercation over social, social media. media. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, so in my eyes, if there wasn't no social media, he'd be here today because these boys would not have any form of interaction with each other. You know what I mean? I know social media, is, it's got its good bits and it's got its, it's, got its faults, but, you know, um, it played, it, played, played, it, played, it, played, it played a major part. So he came to the school, did he come for Kamari? No. No, he came for another kid. So he came to the school, obviously armed with a knife, yeah. looking another for kid. another child. Yeah. Um, he didn't see the other child? No, no, but he knew Kamari knew the other person. Right. So I will, I'm going to presume that he thought he might as well just do what he intended to do, which was to hurt someone. Either he, he knows yeah. or he's from a certain area. And did he have an argument with Kamari? No. No. Nothing. So no form they had no form of community like no no no, 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 no form of interaction at all. And I and I know that at some stage Kamari was running from him. Of so course, so yeah. I take it that he obviously made it known in some way. He had a knife on yeah. him. Yeah. So so Kamari Well he approached him. He approached him. Well, okay. when when you because when you see it on CCTV uh-huh. yeah um you see that you see the you see the young lad jump out of what was it behind the car with the pillar box yeah he's jumped out and what he's done is he's confronted kamari right. so what you see him you see him has come out and he's confronted kamari okay. kamari's walking down walking down the street so he just popped out on him bam right. you know what i mean and you can see but kamari's froze but they 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 had a form of verbal there was because he said sorry. Kamari he said sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, so there was no argument. Yeah, there was no argument. There was no argument. Yeah, there was no argument. Right. Right. There's no right. argument right. But he's obvious something was so being said. he was defensive because yeah. he, he was. Def- out yeah, well, well, yeah. This is what this so is what it, this is what it is. So it's obvious. One, the person must have startled him like it would have done anyone else. You know what I mean? And to see, but he's got a knife in his hand. Yeah, you know. Um, and obviously we know what happened. He, he obviously caught up to Kamari and, and, and subsequently he stabbed him. Three times. Three times. Yeah. Which he claims was a mistake. He fell on him. Which obviously the, the jury didn't in the court. Well, well, you can't fall in someone that stabbed him three, three times. times. Yeah. And so, who helped Kamari? Who was first to the scene? I, I know, Lillian, that you were able to get yeah. to the scene. Mm-hmm. Um what was and I look I, I'm sorry to have, be reliving this moment and yeah. um, what was that like um to be quite honest on an ordinary day I would I would have been panicked um anybody tells me anything about my kids and it's just, just normally just yeah, yeah. But for some reason I don't even know why that day I didn't panic I just kind of just went straight to the school as soon as my daughter told me that she just received the call yeah um, from what I can gather, he must the teacher. There was a teacher there with Kamari, and mm-hmm. he must have asked the teacher to call my daughter because he knows I was at work, and right. just in case I don't pick up the phone. So the teacher called Piera, and Piera called me. So mm. we went down there. Yeah. Um, was he getting any help at the time? At the time, um, he was very vocal. He was on the floor, but um, he was telling. Like, obviously, there was a lot of kids who wanted to be around. Yeah, and I just remember him, like, just kind of more or less giving direction on, like, <laughs> what was going on. Um, I don't... Um, I do remember him putting his head up, like, to acknowledge that I'm there and just to be like, don't worry. So, mm. like, that was the look he always gave me. I just know. Yeah. Come on, we didn't like me panicking about anything. Yeah, so he wanted <laughs> to make sure that he yeah. was... Okay. Yeah. And um, obviously, you. I know you, Paul. You were you were at work, mm. and um, got the call, and also made your way down. So you get in the ambulance with him. Yeah. And, and travel to the hospital, mm-hmm. um, and from everything I I know and I've been told for, and heard from yourself, it would have seemed like it. You would have felt that something mm-hmm. serious has happened, but he's probably going to be okay. Would that, was that your feeling at that time? Or um, was you a bit unsure? I mean, he was from... I, if I'm honest with you, I would say at that stage, it's 
I was just going through the motions, right. just making sure that my son got to where he needed mm. to go. Um, in essence, I kind of felt like whatever the situation is, whether it's good or bad, he's in safe, safe hands. hands. He's waiting. Yeah, yeah, I had a lot of. Um, I could. I don't know whether maybe because Kamari was so small or he was still quite vocal at the time. A lot of the people that were dealing with him, from the ambulance people all the way to the hospital, they seem to just generally want to do their best. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm and that was Yeah. Yeah. And um, we obviously know that he he did succumb to his injuries. Yeah. Um, in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Um. After them trying to do. And they attempted to resuscitate him. Was it four or five times? I'm not sure. Yeah. Or you didn't make it to the hospital in time. Yeah. You did? Did you did you speak? Did I didn't you? get to see him. Though. You didn't get yeah. No. Mm-hmm. By the time I got to the hospital he was already in surgery. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really get to see him. But when I got there they assured me that everything was okay. Yeah. So when we got so there So you felt that Yeah. Yeah, when we got there everything was okay. It was it was A OK, like he's up singing singing Bob Marley's songs yeah. and so and so. So it, it was it was it was it was looking good. And then about Half hour later, forty five minutes later, was it about that? Yeah, about half hour, forty five minutes later or so. Um, they called us into a room and told us um things have changed for the worse. He hadn't passed he hadn't passed at that time, but they 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 they'd, um they brought it to our attention but Kamari's heart had stopped a couple of times at that present time. Right. And um but when they were telling us that, they'd also told us they'd start his heart back up again. And they were still operating on him, you know. But um, at that time, it wasn't good, mm. you know. Especially hearing that, because then you think you like, is he gonna make it? Is he not gonna make it? It's obvious you're hoping. Yeah, he does. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I tell you the truth, I didn't handle that very well. Yeah. Well, I don't. I, I I think one of the things I've always said as my friend is that I've. I haven't even tr- I haven't even been strong enough to even try and put myself in your shoes. Mm-hmm. I I can't I couldn't I can't do it. I mean I came to the my daughter was in Leicester at uni and mm-hmm. then she was the one who called and told me. Um, mm-hmm. and I remember calling Simon, who he would call his uncle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Simon just bursting into tears on the phone. Mm-hmm. I was literally five minutes from your house, mm-hmm. no, seconds from your house when mm-hmm. I got through to Simon and then obviously he came to the hospital and, and I know what I saw um, the trauma mm. upon everybody children adults and it's not something I would wish on anyone um, and as I said I've not even been able to allow myself to put myself in your shoes mm-hmm. because of how hurtful it has been just as a friend um, to experience that and to know that Kamari and you can confirm this mm-hmm wasn't involved in any gangs? Nope, he wasn't involved in any gang, didn't carry any weapon. I think his main interest in love was music. Mm. Yeah, the only gang he was involved with was his family. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, so that, I mean, I don't know, it, may, it doesn't make it easier. As I said, it's young people. But, yeah. you know, I think it gives us, it helps us process things maybe... If yeah, we you know, if, like, it, I mean, if it was that way in Kanye, it would it would answer a couple of questions. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, it doesn't. For me, even if yeah. he was that way, it like, would still, yeah, still, yeah, it still would answer. It still would, it still, yeah, it still would. But it would, it would be like. And unfortunately, I feel like it's that attitude that is dehumanizing. Yeah. What we are seeing happening yeah. to young just black. because they're in a, you know, they were shot at three o'clock in yeah. the morning yeah. or at twelve o'clock or in the yeah. wrong place or yeah. they were a member of a gang. It doesn't matter. They're young people. They're young kids. And it's sad that, you know, in terms of how we are as people, we can dissociate ourselves. Disassociate because we, yeah, because we feel that, well, that wouldn't be my job. Yeah. And I feel like that is probably why this epidemic is being allowed to um, go on so much. And it's Mm. it's easy for me to sit here and say, like many other people have said, if this was white, young Mm. white boys dying at this rate, Mm. Something would something differently different would be happening, of course, and I, and and it feels like mm-hmm. it is that disassociation that yeah. actually our, our it's not happening to us yeah. and that can't happen to us. It won't happen to our young young boys. 
um, that allows it to continue. Unfortunately, it can happen to anyone. Yeah. And that's what people need to remember. Mm. Um, Kamari wasn't involved in anything that still happened to him. Mm. He, it's, it's just one of those things. Yeah. And do you know, I've never said that yet because I wouldn't want to think like they think so low of our kids, but they'll just don't care about them. You know what I mean? So enough to the fact that they're not even going to lift up a hand to do it. So I've never really said it's not because of it's not because of um, our kids are black and you know it's not happening to white kids. Mm. I, I was just hoping like do you know what? It's just something they just can't fathom they right can't now. Get and, and, on. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's all new to them and this and that. So you know they just come to terms with it. But I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm hoping, I'm, I'm praying, I'm hoping that it isn't. It isn't because our kids of different effort efforts. It's it's difficult to <laughs> to find an alternative yeah. truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's difficult. It's, and I don't think I, I, I don't think, think that people are not trying. Yeah. But I just feel it's, like would it be a different what effort? Doing. Yeah. My, my, no, well you you've got to think in it because you know it, it it kinda it kinda we know to ourselves it would be different if it was white kids dropping out there like flies. I think for me, if we put it into context, each time they talk about um, the knife crime, uh, knife crime crisis, mm -hmm. they always use the words, it's a crisis, it's an epidemic, it's all over the place, it's a problem, we need to do something about it. With the amount of talking and the amount of urgency to it, there's not really been anything implemented that I can see that's tangible yeah. and that it's a direct, look, we're taking a hard line on this situation and we're going to change certain things, we're going to look at. That That I haven't heard. And the Home Secretary, who's the current Home Secretary? Oh my God, I'm, I am into Jav 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 Javid Saeed. Jav Javid Saeed, is it? Mm. Yeah. Did you hear his proposals recently about banning social media? And I'm like, is this... You're laughing. Are these, are these you people in... in you and, and for me, this is part of the problem. We have we are governed by people who are so out don't of touch with, with, with our <coughs> reality. And I'm not talking about our as black people, I'm talking about as working class yeah. Yeah, people, yeah. they're so out of touch that you just think that if you ban social, people can't even ban social media in their house. So I want to see how the government's going to be. Well, I'd like it. to see that. I'd love to see that. You know, you're going to spend all that money and... And, and it's not going to solve, on, man. It's, gonna, me, they, they don't know nothing sense. about us. They don't they, know anything about us. They think they know and they think they know the right... No. I just think they Ask us, we know. More emphasis on if you're... If we're in a... Technology is changing. We can't go backwards. We have to accept what we're, you know what's in front of us. But yeah. it's making our kids aware and also it educating is about education. our kids. It is. Because my kids know what they can and can't put on there. And what's and appropriate and yeah, what's not. Yeah, so to me, we have to move with the times, but at the same time, we have to educate our kids and not kind of, is it Molly Coddle or yeah, try and hide exactly, things yeah. away from them? Mm -hmm. Make them aware that it is a dangerous world out there if you're going on social media and you're projecting yourself a certain way mm -hmm. for young, well, a lot of young girls Stop now demonizing are, them to start are taking well. that platform to again send pictures mm -hmm. and things that they don't yeah. realize is quite harmful. Yeah. So it's us that need to educate, and it's, it's for me, it's not so much the advancement of um, technology, it's mm -hmm. just us that have to be. Educated. All right, guys, we have already got up to our first break, so we're going to take a quick break, have a quick swig of some water, of course, nothing stronger, yeah. and we'll be back on the other side. Have you been denied access to your child? Or is it time you get to spend with your child dependent on the quality of relationship you have with their mother? Here at Father Figure Children and Family Services, we want to support fathers to maximize their role within the lives of their children by supporting them to regain contact with children whom they have been unjustly denied access to. On average, a family lawyer will cost anything from £250 per hour. However, we offer a court advocacy support service which operates at a fraction of the price with an even more personalized service. We will not only guide and support you every step of the way, but we also provide parental coaching as and when necessary. We'll fill in the forms, write 
opposition statements for court, attend court, as well as negotiate with a respondent solicitor. We believe that our 100% success rate of re-establishing contact between fathers and children is due to our ethos, which views the child as the client. You don't just pick us, we choose you too. If you'd like support establishing contact with your child, visit our book online page at www.fatherfigure.org.uk and book yourself a free consultation now. That's www.fatherfigure.org.uk.